Praise the Lord. Good evening. Praise the Lord. Good evening, everybody. Welcome again to Begin Again. I'm your host, Dr. Ray Johnson, along here with my lovely wife. What is your name, young lady? What's my your name? name is Mrs. Alatash Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> It is indeed, again, another episode of Begin Again, a much needed conversation of necessary beginnings or new beginnings and sometimes necessary endings. Mm. And of course, that song you hear in the background, that was the song from our wedding where we took time to walk together and really looked at a Sunday kind of love. And that mm -hmm. kind of ties into what we're going to talk about tonight, because mm -hmm. we're no longer, what is it, boyfriend <laughs> and fiance, we're now husband and wife yes. walking together. And so uh, make sure that you take a few minutes to share this. And uh, as we spend a few minutes getting in together and uh, just talking about relationships, it's not that we've gotten everything perfect and all together. Right. What we've really done is we've kind of looked at some things that we've learned from a very a previous history and past and learned what not to do. Mm -hmm. And then we're looking at some things that we're learning along the way as we Absolutely. go in terms of how relationships work and what's really, really important. And so again, I kind of see myself as an author, educator, leadership development coach. Honey, how do you see yourself as we gather together on these kind of moments of uh, coming together for beginning <laughs> again? Well, certainly a worshiper and a woman in love with this man yeah. and working on that writing. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I would also say that you see yourself as a prayer development coach. I see we've got some people who are already tuned in oh, good evening. already. Good evening to each and every one of you. Thank you. Well, hello, Dr. McZeal. Yeah. Hi, Sister Sheila. Yeah. Love you tonight. Yeah. Make sure. Thank you, for tuning in. Thank you all for tuning in, Sheila and Cynthia. And so tonight's conversation and topic is going to be a little bit different. You know, we've done some things like the acid test where we really kind of looked at the pH balance in terms of personal happiness and what it takes for relationships to actually work well together and how they function. But what I found is very interesting is that sometimes people can come into relationships with the wrong idea. They can. Mm -hmm. They can come and enter into them with the wrong understanding. And we've got a whole lot of reasons why people tend to enter in and involve themselves in relationships in the times in which we're in. And some of those aren't necessarily according to the pattern of things, the way right. that heaven has designed it. So I want to just take a few minutes and just talk a little bit about tonight, about how purpose, uh, you know, how relationships and really marriage is really designed around purpose. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people connect in and uh, I put inside of the uh, kind of description of this that they make connections, get into mm. covenant, and then sometimes have even contractual obligations right. all for the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes it just takes just a little bit of time before that begins to unveil itself and mm -hmm. people really begin to find out, OK, wait a minute, I didn't enter into this thing for the wrong idea. And so here is something I want us to take a look at. Uh, Pastor uh, Joshua Williams from Ambassador Worship Center. Mm -hmm. He had a very, very interesting take on marriage mm -hmm. and he talked about it in his series. And so tonight, before we even get into this, we wanna take a few minutes and kind of set that up and give you a chance to look at that because he begins to talk about something that I begin to mention, the Lord began to minister to me, that whenever purpose is aligned, promises are fulfilled, and of course, passion indeed is inevitable. I'll say that again. Whatever purpose <laughs> is aligned, uh -huh. promises are fulfilled, mm -hmm. and passion is indeed inevitable. inevitable. And so he spoke to that. I want you to just take a few minutes and take a look at this, and we'll come right back. Marriage has never been something that God has called people to. He's never called people to marriage. He's called people to purpose. And if marriage completes purpose, then you should be married. The word of God makes it very, very clear that marriage is not the goal. You are not more saved than another person that's single. You're not more saved than a person that's been divorced because marriage has never gotten anybody to heaven. Marriage doesn't make you holy. Like, I mean, it's a container. So you're able to, you know, do all of like the fun stuff, like, like sex and intimacy and all those types of things. The point that I'm trying to make today is that if you tie your life to the wrong person or thing that will determine the direction the trajectory and the speed of your life but yokes are not just romantic you can be yoked up with a bad business partner you can be yoked up in the wrong position at the wrong business you you can be yoked and be in the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong people so being yoked i really want to make sure that we understand today it's not a romantic word but being yoked basically is your choice and who you hook your life up with
Wow. <laughs> How powerful was that? Very. He said marriage is not necessarily the goal. God doesn't call people to marriage. He calls people to purpose. Yes. And so tonight, I think what we're focusing in on, not even I think, I'm very clear that we're focusing in on about the priority and the purpose of marriage. Mm -hmm. That it's not necessarily about marriage and coming together in and of itself. Right. It's about God's design and it's about God's purpose for how marriage operates and how it's supposed, it's supposed to work. And then he talked about, it's real interesting how sometimes you've gotta be very, very careful about who you yoke your life in with. Absolutely. And so that term yoke that he used is, comes from an Old Testament concept where they would take uh, an, a seasoned oxen mm -hmm. and a younger one and they would tie them together by the neck and the seasoned oxen had the wisdom Mm -hmm. about how to be able to plow this field in these straight lines. But that younger one mm -hmm. had the strength. And so there are there are moments in marriage when someone has the strength and mm -hmm. someone has the wisdom in being able to navigate through it. So I've got a couple of A's tonight. Well, can I, can I say something? Yeah, jump right in. Jump because right when in. you start talking about being yoked up, what if you decide... Because, you know, the, the scripture tells us, do mm -hmm. not be unequally Equally. yoked. Uh -huh. And so while you gave the example of the young oxen and the older oxen, what if you take an oxen and a mule? Right. Because a mule is stubborn. Mm -hmm. So you can tell the mule to move all day long, but is he stubborn? Yeah. He's not getting he's going not nowhere. Moving. He's not moving. And then you have an oxen, a very strong-willed beast of burden, used to the obligation of carrying the weight. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you can be in a, a situation where someone is always carrying the, the weight, weight. Uh -huh. and the other one refuses to comply. Uh -huh. or the other one refuses to move off of their position because they feel like they're right. And the oxen say, come on, let's get moving. Let's right, go. Right. And the stubborn is saying, I ain't going nowhere. Right, right. We, we <laughs> got a, the, the old time we got another term for that. We'll just call it donkey. I, would, I won't use the other term. Well, well, it's in the Bible, though. It's in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm, what the, the point I'm trying to make, and because you can flip it, what if you have somebody who is stubborn in their faith and they believe yep. a certain way, right. and the other one doesn't? Right. You know, there's all different kinds of yokes that we can be yoked up mm -hmm. to, but it says don't be unequally Equally. yoked. And wow. sometimes we think if the two are the same, if you got two oxen, one is old, and you know, but we can still get going. No, you've got to, you know really evaluate what you're working with. Mm -hmm. You know, we make the uh, comment about that pH balance and that personal happiness. Yeah. Sometimes I, I think about that pH as psychological health. <laughs> Are we really healthy psychologically right. when we come together? Right. Because that's going to affect how we choose in our marriage. Um, um, thank you for letting me do that little sidebar. <laughs> <I said. laughs> Which is to say, no, he said very interesting from the video. God does not call people to marriage. He calls them to purpose. And to the degree that the marriage serves the purposes of God for both of the individuals uh, coming together, remember the scripture says two is better than one. Right. So you've got to be very clear about what your individual purpose is before you get yoked in with somebody in, under the confines of marriage. And so I got a couple of A's tonight that I think are going to help us. Number one, what is it? So the nice question, let me go here tonight. What is what is the purpose of marital relationships or how do we maintain mm -hmm. the purpose of marital relationships? And number one, it's got to be about alignment mm. in order to maintain the purpose of a marital relationship. It's got to be aligned properly. And when I think about alignment, I talk, I'm thinking about the roles, rules, and the relationships uh -huh. that we have. And sometimes we have to remember that marriage is not our idea, it's God's idea. So it's got to be entered into as an institution according to God's plan and according to his pattern uh -huh. and according to his ways. And so that's very important for us. But sometimes we kind of look at it from how we can redefine it, mm -hmm. how we can work it for us, for our benefit, coming in with, with the wrong motivation mm -hmm. and the wrong understanding. And the key about alignment when you start talking about marriage and purpose is really about relationships. Yes. And what I mean about relationships, I mean this. Oftentimes, uh, we can, re we, relationships require the ability to adjust, especially in second time or begin again relationships. 
they require adjustments. And now let me go back to that because you mentioned about sometimes some people can be fixed in a certain mm -hmm. way or stubborn in their faith in a certain way or stubborn in their perspective in a certain way and they're not willing to adjust. Mm -hmm. But real alignment and real relationships require adjustments. Mm -hmm. Our ability to be able to say, you know what, today you're go I'm, I'm going to trust in your wisdom in this area or I'm going to trust in your strength in this area or I'm going to trust in your strategy in this area, or I'm going to follow your lead in this area. And sometimes I thought about like tonight, uh, because when we start talking about roles and rules, sometimes a lot of times men can really become very stubborn and not willing to make adjustments. Women can too, but I don't think so like men, like men can be sometimes. So when you start talking about roles and rules mm -hmm. and that kind of things in terms of the dynamic of the relationship today, you came home and you were outside with your hands in the dirt. <laughs> Oh, you're dead. I'm just you're gonna tell that part because I, I want people to see about the adjustment. Okay. And I was in the kitchen with the broom sweeping the floor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, traditionally, I would be somebody outside with my hands in the dirt, right? <laughs> but that, that, that ain't necessarily the case. What I'm talking about is the adjustments that are necessary for the relationship to work so that, watch it now, there can be an alignment mm -hmm. so that the purpose of the relationship is fulfilled. Amen. And so tonight we're talking about the purpose and priority of marital relationships. And if they're going to reach the goal of their purpose about why the union is together, mm -hmm. alignment is critical and alignment is key. Anything you want to share on That's that good. about That's alignment? Good. Go There's ahead. something about it. You know, whenever I think about alignment, I always liken it to the car. Yeah. And you always know that you're out of alignment when you when you have the steering wheel yeah. and you can let it go and it starts to veer off in a different direction. Yes. So the, the, the difficulty or the problem that arises when you're not in alignment or you're not operating in order mm -hmm. um, in a relationship is that one is going one way while the car is being steered the other. Right. And so it's a constant battle. A it's constant a bullet. fight. Yes. To try to keep it on the road and mm -hmm. to, on the path to where it's supposed to go. Mm -hmm. um, because if you let it go, it's eventually going to wreck anyway, right. because it's going to veer off. Either it's going to hit another car, it's going to hit another pothole, it's going to hit mm -hmm. the side of the median, mm -hmm. it's going to hit something. Um, but you don't want it to hit something for you to have to come back to yourself right. and realize, oh, I was going the wrong way. I should have just uh, stayed uh, stayed in, in my state. Not necessarily, I shouldn't say stay in my place, but right. I should have stayed in agreement. Right. When I think about alignment, uh, let's like an alignment to agreement. Right. Okay. We because we don't go there in a minute. Yeah, because agreement, uh, the power of unity brings the blessing of the Lord. Mm -hmm. um, behold, how how good and pleasant it is for us to dwell together in yep. unity. Yeah. Um, and then it goes on in Psalm one thirty three to tell us how it's like the the oil that's running down and uh, you know through Aaron's beard, but it's there that he commands the blessing. Right. So if you want the blessing of the Lord in your household, Hello. you want to be walking in agreement. Hello. You want to be walking together. Yeah. You want that to be your goal. You want to reach that state of agreement, mm -hmm. which is sometimes the hardest state to reach, you right. know, right. you be in the car and the hardest state to get to um, on your map is agreement. But yep. that's where you want to be yep. um, is that unity. So tonight we're talking about uh, the purpose and priority of relationships. Mm -hmm. And we looked at Joshua Williams from the Ambassador Worship Center, and he made the statement, God doesn't call people to marriage. He calls them to purpose. Mm -hmm. And so tonight we're talking about what makes for a purpose-filled or a relationship based on purpose and God's priorities. And the first one we talked about tonight was alignment. Mm -hmm. Number two, she didn't know I was going here, but she went there already, and that is agreement. Amen. And so if you're going to be able to fulfill the purpose for why you are together, you've got to be able to operate in agreement. Mm -hmm. And when I'm saying agreement, here's what I mean. Uh, being able to clearly answer, why are we together? Mm -hmm. Why are we here? What is our direction and yes. where are we headed? I'll do that again. Why are we together? Why are we here? What is our direction and where are we headed? Mm -hmm. I'll even add one to that in terms of where we're headed. How are we going to get there? Being able to get agreement in the areas of things like this, finances or retirement. We're talking about beginning again, second time around relationships, mm -hmm. savings, how we're going to raise children, educational pursuits, looking at a uh, property that we have together. And the key to getting agreement in those areas, watch this, the key to getting an agreement in those areas is what I call best practices. And so here is where agreement can sometimes become undone 
because we can be married to an idea mm -hmm. or a thought process from a previous experience that we're bringing to this current experience. Mm -hmm. And although we've got the same goal and we've got headed in the same direction, especially when you're looking at finances, mm -hmm. raising children, purchasing a property, location where you're going to live, what your goals and objectives are, all of that can be aligned for the purposes of agreement. But it's in the day to day practice of how you cause those things to come about mm -hmm. that sometimes we get married to an idea or thought or a way that we've always done it. I'm already back into Sunday already because sometimes you've gotta be willing to watch this. I use the term adjustment for the first one, mm -hmm. change in the second one. This right. is a new relationship. It's a new dynamic. Now there are some things that are the same. There are some uh, things that you are going to deal with that you're wrestling with that are the same. Like, you know, you were a teenager one, I was a teenager once, but teens today are different from when we are Very teens, but require different <laughs> strategies and require different concepts and require different means. But overall, the principle is the same in terms of rearing and developing and growing. So if we're going to accomplish the purpose for why we are together, number one, alignment is important. And number two, being able to operate an agreement. Uh -huh. An agreement works well when you look at best practices of how we're going to be able to do what we're going to do and dealing with some of the issues that you face, especially in a next time or second time or begin again kind of relationship and, uh, in order for it to be able to work. Anything you want to add in on I that? Would. Agreement? Um, you know, uh, one of the best practices that you can have in your marriage is intentionality. Yes. Being very intentional oh, about good. what you do and what you say. Yeah. You know, on Saturday, we were down at the church and we're working um, to prepare the service for, for Sunday. Sunday. Uh -huh. And one of our homeless patrons uh, started talking to me when I went outside. Uh, Bishop, you were inside and yeah. I had gone yeah. outside and he started talking. And of course, the end goal was to get, you know, a dollar, a couple of dollars. Yeah, a couple of dollars. And that was fine. <laughs> but he started talking. He said, hey, young lady, you know, do you know what your purpose is? You know, I already know I'm homeless. I already know, you know, he goes on yeah, to tell the story. It, yeah. um, but he said, but do you know what your purpose is? And so it kind of is stopped for a minute, you know, in mm -hmm. our religious answer, we always said, well, it's to worship God. We're mm -hmm. here to glorify God. And as a worshiper, of course, that's the first thing that comes to, from your from your heart is that I'm here to glorify God. Right. Um, he said, well, I, you know, he said, well, that sounds good. But what's your purpose for today? Uh -huh. You know, but but as he kept going and kept going, I said, well, it's just to, to serve as many people as I can yeah. and to be to help because my heart and my gifting is to serve and it's yeah. to help and it's yeah. to bring others into an, an enlightened place with God so that they see themselves as more than just, you know, existing more than just being there. But there was an intentionality that he wanted. He wanted me to be able and we ought to be able to verbalize right. or to understand what it is that we're doing, why we're doing it at the moment. Yes. Why did you say what you said out of your mouth? Right. You know, earlier you said sometimes we're married to ideas. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we're married to our pain. Mm -hmm. We're married to our past experience mm -hmm. and we have not allowed that to be healed and to be washed and to be covered by the blood of the lamb yes. and placed into the sea of forgetfulness. Yes. Some of us are still holding on to things that have happened to us mm -hmm. in the past that we've made judgment vows against them and said, I oh, will never good. put myself in that place again. Explain um, that judgment vow. So a judgment, that. a judgment vow is when you have gone through an experience mm -hmm. and you say, I will never allow that to happen again. Mm -hmm. I will never ha let this, this pain happen again. I and remember, that becomes your worldview and your lens for absolutely. how you see the world. It's how you see the world. Mm -hmm. It's how you make decisions. Mm -hmm. It's how you reserve yourself. So you will hold back on loving another, you will mm -hmm. hold back on pursuing life or pursuing a goal because you fear what happened before is going to happen again. Yeah. You know, uh, part of my 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 thing was I'm never going to do this again. Right. Um, and some of us make those kind of judgments. Yeah, what's that there. statement you used to say? Marriage is what is a prison. <laughs> <laughs> but praise God for the blood that washes and deliverance. <laughs> But yeah, you know, the Andrew sang that song, Deliver Me, because all I seem to do is hurt me, you right, know. Right. But sometimes that, that's what happens when we're, we're hurt. We yeah. tend to do the same things over, over and, and over, over again. again. Yeah. And then we start to say, I'll never do that. Yeah. But what we really need um, in our hearts and in our lives yeah. is as we come into this new relationship, God help reveal my heart to me yes. so that I'm not saying things and doing things and operating yeah. in a way yeah. that's causing my, my significant other to doubt the love that I have for them yeah. or that's keep true. me from releasing the past so I can receive 
the future. Yeah. I can receive what's in my present. Yes. You can't keep holding on to the past and holding on to the future at the same, same time. time. It will rip you apart. What does the scripture say? A double-minded or double minded person unstable in, in all, all their, their ways. ways. Yeah. And so practically when you look at it, you can't do both, both. at the same time. Mm -hmm. You can't. You can't hold on to your previous experience on. and that worldview that you have and try to move forward. And try to move forward. Uh -huh. It's almost like looking in a rearview mirror and trying to drive forward at the, the whole same time. time. My, oh, at that's the same good. Time. Say that one <laughs> more time. That's good. Somebody need to put that inside the chat Absolutely. right there. Absolutely. Yeah. You like, can't look in the rearview mirror and drive forward and drive at forward. the same time. You got to keep your eyes on the road. What's right. in the past is behind you. Mm -hmm. So you got to be able to let it go. We're talking tonight. Mm -hmm. about the purpose and priority of relationships. Joshua Williams of the Ambassador Worship Center, he said, if you missed it, go back and watch the replay. He said, God does not necessarily call people to marriage. He calls them to purpose. And to the degree that purposes are in the same vein, they are heading in God's direction to fulfill his plan for why you are together. You've got to be able to answer that question. So tonight we're answering what makes for a purpose-filled relationship. What right. makes for one? One, we said, is alignment. Somebody put it inside of the comment section. Two, we said uh, agreement. Put that inside of the comment section. Here is the last one for tonight. You've got to have an, ins uh, an assurance. Amen. And when I say assurance, what I really mean is the insurance of assurance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You've got to have an assurance that you're going to make it for the long haul. Mm -hmm. And you've got to have an insurance in God Amen. that this relationship that you are connected into is God-centered, God-sent, and God-ordained. Let me Absolutely. do it again. It is God-centered, mm -hmm. God-sent, and God-ordained. Why do I keep saying that? Because re remember, marriage is God's idea. It is his concept. It is his strategies. It is his uh, a vehicle, his plans, his roles, rules, and regulations, if you will, for how it works. Nothing is wrong with the institution of marriage. The issue is really us trying to bring some of our stuff, rear view mirror stuff in it in order to be able to get it to work as we look at looking at how we redefine it. But the assurance of insurance that I'm going to be here for the long haul, I'm not going anywhere, that God's called me to this for his purposes and his plans in regards to his kingdom. What do people see when they see you and your significant other together? Amen. Do they see an image of Christ's love for the church? Do they see a unity and tranquility like the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Or do, because they're not bickering with each other. They're not fighting with each other. They're walking in unison yeah. and in peace. And they're following the roles and rules of how they function. Jesus is always talking about his connection with the Father. And then he's, the Holy Spirit is always echoing what Jesus has already said to us. Do you see the congruence of that? And so, such, so should it be in our relationship that you've got to have that assurance that you're going to be together from now until Jesus comes. Absolutely. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Because, you know, the Bible tells us many are the plans and the purposes in a man's heart, yeah. but it's the Lord's purpose that will prevail. Yeah. And God's purpose is that we we be the example, yeah. be the example. of Christ and the church, that right. we be a light to the world, Yeah. that we be an example of covenant. And, you know, as as I know, we're about to close tonight, yeah. um, but there's something I want to say about getting God getting the glory out of what we do. Yes. Yeah, Everything that we do in our marriage. Yes, we're going to make mistakes at times, mm -hmm. but we have to know how to come back together, how to confess yeah. our sins, even before yeah. the Lord, sometimes even before each so, other yeah. and allow the word of God to wash us and cleanse us yeah. in areas yeah. where we thought we had it all right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Married to an idea <laughs> or strategy that we and thought. And what's going to bring God the most glory? Yes. Just divorcing again? Absolutely no. not. Mm -hmm. uh, but we want to, you know, if we think that we're going off of alignment or out of agreement or, or we're not changing to, to be equal and, or are unified in our thoughts yes. um, and unified in our plans and unified in our purposes. Now, it's going to take some communication. Yes, it is. It's going to take prayer. Yeah. It's going to take those things yeah. so that you're walking together. Yeah. Um, uh, 
but you want to glorify God yeah. in everything that you do. Yeah. So the purpose and the priority of God is that you glorify him mm -hmm. and that you look like him. Mm -hmm. And we've got to make that our purpose and our priority that we want to look like Christ in what we do yes. uh, so that it shows forth the glory of the father, yeah. that he gets the glory. And it's not because we were so good. Oh, because I love them so much. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how we got together. Mm -hmm. But, you know, truly honoring God in all that we do. And he will give us a pure love one for the other. Yeah. I do believe that. And yeah. he will bring the passion and the uh, uh, um, and the enjoyment yeah. that the two have together. Yeah. Um, because as you say, go ahead and say it again. It's as like, purposes are alive yes, and the yes. promises are fulfilled uh, and passion, passion is, inevitable. is inevitable. Somebody ought to put that in the comments yes, section. Yes, and that passion, yeah. um, that passion, it, it makes a sound, yeah. um, not uh, not necessarily uh, verbally, but yeah. uh, visually. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it resonates yeah. in the atmosphere. We want it so, we want it so when somebody sees us, they see the Father, but they see a begin again opportunity. Amen. That's the sound we want people to see. Listen, Amen. we're way out of time. Uh, but look, <laughs> wake up with Lady tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. for Take It to the Lord Tuesday. Special guest will be on. Tune in with us next month as we come together again. We've got more opportunities for talking about marriage and relationships. And always remember, you can begin, begin again. God bless you. We'll see you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.